You're listening to the Proxia Podcast. Yeah, but well, the next track up was uh, Locomotive Breath. Um, obviously, yeah, a fantastic album. Um, this is the one that, that Ian Anderson said was not a concept album. Oh, it's not. And it's not. Absolutely, no. it's not. But you know, the, the weird thing is, though, Paul, um, mm-hmm. when I first started listening to this, and I didn't know there was there was anything about, you know, whether it's a concept album or not a concept album, mm-hmm. but it feels like a concept album. You know, if you start mm-hmm. taking the first few tracks, you start listening to the album, you take the first few tracks, and there's characters mentioned in, you know, the same yeah. characters, Aqualung's mentioned in the second track as well. Um, yeah. uh, I think Cross-Eyed Mary crops up a little bit throughout um, throughout Tull's uh, exactly, movie, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But it's sort of, but if you listen to it, you know, and again, mm-hmm. um, when I'm say that when you listen to it in them days, you know, you maybe put you sit on a beanbag, put some headphones on, look at the album cover while you're listening to the music. To me, it was like a concept album. It felt mm-hmm. like it was all connected. It, even though I wasn't really sort of, um, it, do you know, it, it was like one of those films that had different stories and different people in the same world. And yes. I think that's that's why people sort of went or thought it was a concept album when mm. if you actually analyse it, it's not. And then Ian Anderson says it's not. But, you know, yeah. you've got to take his word for it. He didn't write it as a concept album. You've got to take his yeah. word for it. But it just feels like it to me anyway. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think and, Anderson, uh, Ian Anderson is a fascinating guy. I'd love to meet him one day. Um Obviously, got you no know, strong views on a number of things, and you know, he's done so much good stuff. And hey, he's, he's earned that right. Um, there, there, there are there are a couple of songs, as he admits, which uh, it's meant to be a bit of a side swipe at religion. Um, yeah, and, and again, for those people watching in YouTube land, uh, the back of the album cover, it's got you know, the gothic type uh, font. It's got a bit of a, a poker term, that sort of religious iconography there, etc. So you can understand why people would you know draw one or two things uh, out of it which aren't there. But it's me, so what? So that's that's part of the, um, the, the I think, one of the great and interesting things about Prague. There's so much going on. There's a sort of intertextual element going on that you, you make these connections. And there are so many connections. Hey, if as a listener, we make one or two that weren't deliberately there, weren't meant to be there, then so what? That's part of our enjoyment. And I, I don't suppose uh, in Anson would mind too much if we saw stuff that wasn't there, if we kept on buying the, the, uh, the albums and all well and good, you know. We, we can wait until um, Thickers of Brick comes along for the uh, mother of all concepts. But, uh, yeah, so does it, is it a concept album? No. Does it have some um, thematic unity? Yeah, I, I guess it does, yeah. Um, but, no, there's the stuff on here which is, is nothing to do with, no, religion per se. But, hey, great album. And, you know, who, who as a guitarist, you know, whether a real one or imaginary one, hasn't got their, their air guitar out of their air guitar case? And just done that riff, you know, Martin Barr. Thank you for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. I mean, it's but it, whether it was meant or not meant, it seems to be like a like a a little slice of a of a sleazy underworld, you know, with different people's yeah. stories all sort of intertwining. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah, um, and maybe slightly disingenuous because of of, of Mr. Anderson. Because now you look at that front cover. And everyone goes, that's Ian Anson, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't meant to be. It's like, really? <laughs> so, yeah. It's sort of it's sort of like a like a like an organic conceptual work, you know, rather than something that's actually been written. But you know, a bit like, you know, uh, I don't know, Lamb Lies Down or Twenty One Twelve or Small Creeps Day from Mike Rutherford, you know, those sort of things. You know, they're they're actually built as stories and and written mm-hmm. to it. And I don't think he even meant to do it, but I think it sort of just comes over as it to me. Um and I've, and I've sort of argued it ever since that it feels like it, whether it was meant or not. So, <laughs> you're listening to the Proxia Podcast. 